Okay, so today we have a real seminar. So Grzegorz Gutowski is the speaker and he is present on the campus and he will talk about, uh, well, I mean, how to relatively even this split points along the line, right? Or something like that. Uh, with a bunch, the, the result of it was obtained with a bunch of other people relatively even split among some universities in Poland. Grzegorz, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right, so uh, this is my first result outside of computer science. So when we decided to write it down, we decided to put it in number theory, not computer science. Computer science is the second uh, choice in, in archive. So this is, this is something new. And it's going to be a project that started with coffee table mathematics. And as uh, Professor Ijak uh, said, it's, uh, there are many people, many names, uh, on this slide, and this is exactly because it's coffee table mathematics. So it's all it all started at a virtual coffee table. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me introduce you to the to the problem. Uh, it's called seventeen point problem, and uh, it's a game that you play alone. And in the first round, you have to put a point in the real interval somewhere between zero and one. So this is this yellow point. And you keep this yellow point to the second round in which there are two intervals. One starts at zero and ends at half, and the second one is from half to, to one. And you need to put two points to pierce both of those intervals. And one of them is fine. Uh, well, it's always one of them is fine after the first round. So I need to put the second point in the, in the first interval here. All right, so let's put it there. And in the third round, there are three intervals that I need to pierce. And I have two points from previous rounds and at least one of the intervals is empty. And I need to add one more point there. So I do that. And in the fourth round, I hope you, you get the drift. So we have three points from previous rounds. If we are lucky, then three of the intervals are already uh, pierced. And I need to add one more point to pierce the fourth one. And we can play this game. And the question is, can you play it? Uh, in at infinitum. So can you survive 100 rounds? So what would be your guess? No. The answer is no, and for some reason, there's number 17 in the title of the slide. And, uh, and this is the answer. So you can play this game, and if you are smart, then you can survive 17 rounds. And uh, this, uh, this game that I'm showing on the slides, uh, the points that I've selected, they really allow you to survive 17 rounds. One more maybe, oh, one more. 
And then this is this is the board uh, after after seventeen rounds. And uh, well, you have to believe me that I've played optimally. And uh, and here, as you can see, there's one missing. Uh, maybe I should I should draw it here for 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 the remote audience. There are some missing points here, at least one, and I need one here and I need one here, right? So that's all. Yeah, I guess that, that's all. Uh, this is not best possible. Perhaps I can move a little bit some of those those points. I could possibly. Um, this is bad. I can't fix this one. I can't fix this one, uh, the, the red one. Um, it would be nice to move it a little bit to the right, but it was already used here to, to kill that interval and I can't move it to the right. So, uh, so it's stuck there. Anyway, you, you, you can't do that. And uh, you, you, in order to, to play this game 18 rounds, you would need one more extra point. So at this round, it would be nice to, to allow second point to be introduced. Okay, so this is the game. Uh, let, me, uh, let me discuss the, the, the history of this, of this problem. So this problem comes from this little book by, by Steinhaus. Uh, it's called 100 Problems in Mathematics. And he asked in, in 58 uh, whether we can play for, for infinitely many rounds, right? So he, he knew that he can play, I, I don't know, 12 rounds, and he wasn't sure if he can play 100 rounds. And uh, I think be, before he published the, the book, uh, Shinzo uh, gave uh, uh, an upper bound that, uh, well, you can't play longer than 74 rounds. Now we know that the answer is 17, but still for them, it was uh, interesting that it's not infinite. And, uh, and then uh, <coughs> Varmus, uh, uh, calculated the, the, the optimum play and uh, he showed that you can't play longer than, uh, than 17 rounds. Uh, the same uh, result appears in, a, in an earlier paper by, by Berlekamp uh, and Graham, but they already write in this paper that, that Varmus was, was, was first to, uh, to calculate the, the, the correct answer. So I, I'm not sure what perhaps this paper by, by Varnus was unpublished and he, he decided to publish it uh, later. So, so this is how we know that it's 17. And then <clears throat> uh, we come to the, to the question that was, uh, that was asked by, by Berlekamp and Graham in, in their pa paper in, in, in 17. So, they decided to allow for more error. So they want to play longer, uh, but they want to give us more points. And the idea by, uh, behind this, uh, this notation is, what if I give you the extra points in the beginning? Okay, so in the original problem by, by Steinhaus, D is zero. You are not given any extra points that you can allocate in the zero round. And for, for this function as of D, you want to start with placing D points, whatever you like. And then again, in each round, you have to uh, add one point and pierce the intervals. Uh, uh, right, so, so in Let's say in k round, you have k plus d points, but you need to pierce all intervals that split the, 
uh, zero one interval into k k parts. Okay, and the this is uh, a very very bad decision to parameterize this problem this way, as we will see later. Uh, but anyway, this was this was their, their question. Uh, what is the asymptotics of this uh, function SD? And uh, they were able to prove an exponential bound uh, by using some heavy machinery. Uh, so the proof was short, but uh, it relied on uh, on heavy, heavy machinery. And I'm not going to, to say anything about it. Uh, now in, uh, uh, in 2017, uh, the number S of one was, was calculated. So now we know that uh, if you are given one more point before you start the game, then you can survive 30, 31 rounds. So uh, this may be, uh, gives hope for some, uh, I don't know, guess for, for the asymptotics. Well, S of, S of two is behind, far, far out of, out of the reach of, of computers. So basically if you, well, we, we, we thought for some time about uh, writing some algorithm that would uh, calculate calculation of S2, but it's, uh, out of reach for, for us. Mm. Okay, so if we were interested in, in asymptotics of uh, S of D, then in 2013, uh, Graham published a paper in which he, let's say he sketched a proof that the correct, uh, that the asymptotics is uh, at most uh, d cubed. And uh, in 2020, there was like a proof of that fact because this, uh, this Graham's paper was not very, uh, there were ideas there, but the proof was not, uh, I would say it's not a complete proof. Uh, so anyway, in the same journal in 2020, there was a, a slightly different proof uh, that the, the, the asymptotics is at most d cubed. And uh, this was the point where we started this uh, coffee table mathematics project. And we didn't knew, know about this uh, result. So in March, there was a uh, there was a paper by, by Konyagin who, who proved that the asymptotics is linear. And, uh, and we did the same. So we, or we have uh, established the, the asymptotics of that, uh, of that function. Um, so, our proofs are different uh, and our bounds are better. Uh, and I think we have something more to say. Uh, mm, anyway, the, 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 the approach by Konyagin is a little bit simpler, I think. So, uh, so it's also interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> our main result concerning uh, this, this function S is that uh, the, uh, the correct, uh, so we, we have the constants in this uh, O notation and S of D somewhere between uh, 2.25 and 5.52. So these are quite close. The, the, the constants by, by Konyagin are somehow it's two on from below and I think 200 from, from above. So it's a little bit 
less uh, uh, we we have a uh, narrowed it down a little bit and we have a conjecture that this uh, lower bound is uh, the correct asymptotics and i'm going to uh, to try to convince you that this is a a, a good good guess uh, by uh, by showing you some of the details of the um, of the proof all right so is the problem clear uh, should we should we at the deep part, I guess yes so we are interested in the multiplicative constant and in our proof this uh, sublinear uh, sublinear thing oh let's let's have it con this, let's have this conversation later all right uh, it's it's there in our proof we don't care about it and we didn't optimize it so there's a big additive constant and a small logarithmic factor okay so uh, we would like to have a different uh, parametrization of the problem and for that i would like to describe the same thing in a slightly different way so we will say that a sequence is uh, piercing for some function f F piercing uh, if, uh, if uh, this F tells you how many points you need to, which prefix of your, uh, of your sequence you need to take to survive uh, nth round, right? So for, for n is the, the number of round yeah and you need f of n points to to survive right and uh, and this is exactly what is uh, uh, written down in this in this definition right so first f of n points intersect each interval uh, of those n intervals dividing zero zero one and for us, important uh, functions f are f of n equals n. This is exactly the, the problem of Steinhaus, where you need, where, where you want to use n points to, to survive n rounds. Uh, for this parametrization, for this uh, function s, you would take function f of n, n plus d, and uh, we will be interested in function that is linear in n. And uh, this is why I say that perhaps this parametrization by, by Graham and, and Berlekamp is not the correct one because, because it's a linear thing and they, they want to keep it like with an additive, uh, additive error, which is somehow not the correct thing to do, but uh, we, yeah. So this is how the- You're telling we should receive gamma points per turn instead- Exactly. So the correct way to think, um, we, I want to focus on the problem in which in every turn you receive gamma points and gamma will be uh, some real constant. And uh, because it this, yeah, so I, I think I will convince you in the end that this is the correct way of uh, stating this problem. Okay, so so this is the setting. And the, the, the question of, uh, of uh, function S is for what is the, the longest sequence X, S that is N plus D piercing, okay? So I will use uh, variable n always in this in this way. Okay, n will be the number of the of, of round. Yeah, and uh, yes. Yeah, so we will allow some for some uh, because we will 
focus on the on the multiplicative uh, constant, we will allow for some sublinear term, which will come in handy. Okay. Mm. So our result in this new mm, in this new parameterization in this new problem is that. Uh, we know exactly the, the multiplicative constant that is possible. And this constant is one over uh, ln two. Okay, so you can do that as long as you get uh, 1.44 points in each round. So in, in some rounds, you will get one point, in some rounds, you will get two points, as long as you get 1.44 in each round, you're fine. If you get less, then you can't do it. So this is uh, this is a nice thing, and it's uh, we can we can go to infinity. So uh, uh, so it's a nice problem because we just we, we either we can construct an infinite sequence that satisfies it for for, for gamma that is uh, at least one over ln two and for smaller gamma that you will you it will break at some point. Okay. So yeah. So so this result uh, somehow tells you that our parameterization of the problem is better. This is really what happens. Okay, and uh, it also motivates our conjecture. So if you somehow translate this multiplicative thing to additive thing, then this uh, one over ln two translates to additive factor that is uh, something like like that, and if you have like compactness, right? Because for each d you get a finite sequence of some length, okay? And there is no compactness. You can't use them to construct an infinite sequence that would be uh, gamma n good in our in our setting but if we somehow use compactness we would get the same uh, constant but as i said there, there is no compactness in in this in this uh, problem but uh, there should be so uh, our our intuition is that well we lose something when translating our multiplicative constant to additive constant, but this is some uh, some cheating. And uh, perhaps if you if you do it differently, then you should get you should get this uh, this uh, this result. Okay. So so this is the setting, and uh, how do we do it? So uh, we did it differently a little bit, but let's uh, now we are smarter, and we know that are that there are uh, some smart results in the past that we can use. And the first thing is that we can strengthen the strengthen the requirement on our uh, sequence. And uh, in our F piercing sequence, we need to pierce every some intervals of length one over n. <clears throat> now, in this strongly piercing setting, uh, we want to pierce uh, every interval that is of length one over n. Okay, so it's a more it's, it's a more difficult problem because there are more intervals to pierce. And, uh, and uh, this problem uh, was known 
before Steinhaus asked his question. And, uh, and there's a solution to it that was given by, by De Brin and uh, Erdes in 49. And they have uh, the same constant. So, so you can construct strongly F piercing sequences uh, for, uh, for uh, this multiplicative uh, constant. Okay, so if you, if you get uh, 1.44 points in every round, then you can not only kill some, uh, some intervals of length one over n, but all of them. Uh, and this result uh, already gives us the, the lower bound in our problem, right? Because if you have a strongly piercing sequence, then it's also a, a piercing sequence. So this is how we get this, uh, the lower bound. The, the upper bound is more interesting because we, what are we going to do is we are going to take a piercing sequence and repair it so, at, so that it becomes uh, a strongly piercing sequence. This is the, the, the idea, okay? So, so these are some, some, some easy observation. If, if a sequence is strongly piercing, then it's, a, and then it's piercing. And the other observation is that if we work with the strongly piercing sequences, then we can look at a sequence and just uh, look for the longest gap between two points of that sequence. Right, because uh, this is exactly, um, this will tell us if we are good or not good for one over n. We just calculate the maximum distance between points. Let's say we add point zero and point one, but it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> and compare it to one over n and, and, and for some n we'll get that this uh, maximum distance is longer than one over n, and it means that it means that we haven't survived uh, the round, uh, the nth round. Okay, so it, it boils down to to calculating the maximum distance, and um, this means that you can well, we, if you ask for a strategy that constructs the strongly piercing sequence, you can think of this strategy as a game in which you have, you start with a stick that is of length one. And in each round, you pick the longest stick and break it into two, right? No, no, no. just in the first round, you pick the stick of length one and choose a point there and break it into two parts, not necessarily of the same length, but, and now you have two sticks on there. And again, you could take not the longest one, but it doesn't really make sense, right? Because if you break a longer one, a shorter one, still this longest one is the, gives you the maximum distance between the points in your sequence. So, you can postpone this, this move and start with breaking this longest one because it's, it's better for you. So, and this is how, how uh, Erdes and Debrin worked. They, they called those sequences stick breaking game or, or stick breaking sequences. And uh, it's a funny name. And because of that, it took us some time to find out about this uh, research. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> uh, mm, so one can uh, so it's a nice a nice, nice uh, break maybe from the talk we can discuss a strategy that just takes the longest stick and break it in some fixed fixed ratio so what would be a nice ratio
I'd say golden. Golden. Golden uh, is not that bad, but it's not the best either. Yeah, so um, so I was hoping somebody would guess to because isn't that natural to just break it in, in half? So this is the worst you can do. Uh, because what happens there, you start with one, then you get two halves, right? And uh, then you, you keep those halves and keep producing one quarters. Uh, but uh, at some point, you, so at, at every round you sum, you have sum of length uh, twice the shorter one and sum of the next level. And you keep splitting this long ones into those shorter ones. But at last point, you have like one very long, twice as long as it should be, and the other ones all short. And this is bad. It's better to, to keep it like more uh, smooth. Yeah. So two is worst possible. And we are able to say something about uh, uh, strategies that use other ratio for, for breaking. And uh, we are able to say that uh, they are uh, that piercing. And if you would use uh, one half here for R, R, uh, you would get the correct result, like one over ln two. But as I said, for two nonchalant, nonchalant, it's not the correct answer you get. That it's two n piercing, uh, because uh, <clears throat> you can't use all r's. Some r's are not good, and it's about uh, oh, it's complicated. Uh, so it would be nice to use. Mm, R equal one half, but you can't use it because something breaks. But you can use R's that are very close to two, and uh, the closer you get to to one half, uh, you 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 can construct uh, one over ln two uh, n piercing uh, strategy in this in this way. But you have to keep changing R on the way to approach two, but never, never, uh, never used to. Okay, but this is, this is maybe nice because it tells you something about other strategies. There is also the strategy devised by uh, Debrin and Erdes. And uh, this is the sequence. So you ju just, uh, Oh, <laughs> this is not the sequence. Uh, so I, I've missed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, log two of this. So you so you cal calculate a logarithm base two of the e odd numbers and take the fractional part of it. No, it's not mod one. It's... Mod one, like take oh. take fractional part. This this is what I mean by, by mod one. Yeah, so it should be it should be log two of two uh, k plus one. So maybe maybe you can use this notation for fractional part. Okay, and uh, and this is how you construct this sequence. And this sequence is, uh, you can see it in this, in, in this slide. It starts somewhere here, the, the, the red one. I also uh, put color on this longest distance. So I, I mark down the, the, the stick that is the longest one in each round. So, so these are the numbers of uh, the, the, the rounds go here. And here I have the, uh, how good it is, right? So uh, one over the longest distance. So 
after say uh, five rounds you can survive four after yeah so after five points you survive four rounds uh, but the distance the, the longest distance between the points is, is one over uh, one over four and some uh, and some more and uh, after 18 rounds you are after 18 points you can survive 13 rounds and this in the end gives you this one over ln2 and strongly uh, strongly piercing uh, uh, so uh, so this is uh, uh, this is the solution by from 49 and it's much better than the one that we can get from those nonchalant strategies because uh, for them it takes some time to to get to to, to nice uh, asymptotics and this one works without uh, additive uh, constant so maybe you can you need to add one or yeah, or maybe even not i don't i don't remember it depends whether you use this point zero and one or not so let's not let's not focus on that uh, okay so so this is the solution to 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 strongly piercing problem uh, and now let's uh, let's sketch the uh, the proof for piercing uh, multiplicated constants. So as I said, we have this lower bound. So you can use this, uh, this sequence from the previous slide also for, for the piercing problem. And we get, uh, we get uh, a lower bound. And by the proof from, uh, from uh, De Bruyne and uh, Erdes, we know that this is the best possible constant. So I'm not going to talk how they prove it. It's not complicated. Uh, there are many different proofs. Uh, some of them simpler, some of them harder. Uh, <clears throat> but now I want to talk about uh, the problem of uh, the piercing se sequences. And the idea behind our proof is that given uh, a gamma and piercing sequence, we want to uh, construct a strongly piercing uh, sequence. And we want to this, this alpha to be uh, close to one. So think about alpha equal one plus epsilon, and we will be able to, uh, to uh, to control that that epsilon, so so this is this is the 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 idea, and uh, and if we allow for uh, for a few more few more rounds, like alpha times more rounds, then this. Uh, this piercing sequence is already alpha n piercing in that many rounds, right? Because we took like more steps. So I'm piercing shorter intervals, like intervals of length one over alpha n. Okay. So maybe if we fix this alpha and beta, and consider the intervals that are pierced by this strongly and by this piercing sequence in the first alpha, gamma, and rounds, it's going to pierce uh, intervals with, uh, with P here uh, of this order. So they are shorter by alpha times shorter. Uh, and we are going to, to use that. <clears throat> by proving that uh, most of the intervals of length one over n uh, contain 
at least one of those uh, shorter intervals of length one over alpha times n, uh, but uh, this uh, equally distributed uh, intervals, not uh, yeah, because th these will be killed by pierced by a uh, piercing sequence. So perhaps we can somehow use them to to pierce most of the of the intervals of length one over n, and and this is the main idea that we that we use. Uh, there are some intervals of length uh, one over n which do not have this property. So, for example, the first one. So, uh, if we draw zero one, okay. So at point zero, there are many intervals uh, zero uh, p to to one over p, right? Uh, for 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 these p, uh, but they all start in the same place, right? So they are maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, yeah. So uh, if we start our interval of length one over n just after this point zero somewhere here, it's longer than, than those guys, uh, but not long enough to, to catch the next one, right? So this point zero is a point where, where intervals starting just after zero and of length one over n, they don't uh, include uh, they don't contain any of the shorter intervals of length uh, one over uh, alpha n, but equally aligned. So there will be problems with this approach, and we will need to uh, handle them in a different way. Okay, so this is uh, this is the the idea. Uh, it's a good point to ask if it's if it's clear. Okay. So what uh, what we're going to do is so we want to. Uh, we want to bring in uh, something that is called pare points, and uh, and uh, the, the 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 pare points from from beta n to to, to alpha n uh, will just uh, take a bag and put their all the fractions with a denominator denominator with denominators between alpha n and beta n and now sort them and put them on the on the on the line and now we are interested uh, in gaps between uh, between those uh, those uh, those fractions <clears throat> for which we control the, the denominator uh, and now what happens is uh, we have decided for some strange reason not to, to, to only use fractions that are also somewhere, somehow uh, away from uh, 1 over n. Uh, we use 1 uh, over beta n. So, so what we do is uh, we need something like uh, like this, uh, yeah. But now, if we if we do it so, the nice thing is that uh, say we have two fractions, a over p, and the next one is b over q, and this gap between them 
is small, then the thing that happens is that, well, uh, if an interval of length uh, one over n starts in this gap, then the interval that starts here in b uh, over q to b plus one over q, uh, because we have decided to, to use only q's of uh, order at least beta n, then this guy is uh, of length uh, at most um, beta n. And now if this length is shorter or equal to this thing, then we have a guarantee that all the intervals of length one over n starting in this gap, they include, they contain this, uh, this interval starting at b over q, okay? So this is why we are interested in, in the gaps in, in this set, because if we are able to show that all the gaps are short, shorter than, than this, then we are fine, right? So all those, uh, this, uh, this piercing sequence becomes a strongly piercing. And we know that it's, it's not true, right? So for, for some, there will be gaps in the set that are, that are larger, but let's start with investigations uh, of those short gaps. So which, which gaps are short because they are already somehow fixed, pierced by, by this uh, gamma and piercing sequence. And we will have to do something else for, uh, for the rest of the uh, zero one interval. And let's hope uh, that this rest is not too big and maybe we can fix it by a different, uh, different approach. Okay. Uh, so, Let's uh, let's focus on on those gaps between uh, fractions of uh, of uh, with uh, with fixed uh, set of denominators. Okay, so now let's talk about small moves. So I I want to for each fraction in this set, find another fraction in the same set that is larger and close to, uh, to A over P. So we can discuss like small moves. What, what happens to a fraction uh, A over P if we, uh, change uh, denominator by plus one and uh, denominator by plus two. And it's convenient to, to draw it like this. So, uh, so this is P, this is A, and oh, so maybe, yeah, so, so well, maybe this is, a over p, right? And let's draw uh, draw it like this. And now we want to somehow move this point by mm, by one uh, one in this direction and. Uh, Two in, in this direction, and we get a different point here. Yeah, and uh, we can we can draw a line going through that point, and this line represents this other fraction there. Okay, so uh, we are interested in this this angle really. If this angle is small, uh, meaning uh, this small, then this is a nice move, like right? it, it moves the fraction to a close one, bigger, 
And uh, let's hope that this small move keeps us in the same um, in the same set of fractions. Right? Is it is it clear? So the only hope is for for APs equal well close to to one half, right? Because uh, the intuition is that if you if you choose uh, if you choose AP like this one. Then for such a fraction, this uh, uh, this uh, mm, this move might be bad. No, I, I, right because uh, it's better to have those the, 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 this blue arrow and the red arrow going in the same direction. If they if there's a difference be, uh, angular distance between difference between them, then it's well the you will get a higher, uh, larger uh, difference between uh, AP and AP uh, plus one half. Okay, so this this is what I will call small moves, and I hope there are a few things. This this move is legal if it keeps me in the same set. So the problem might be is that uh, for some border cases. Uh, adding two in denominator might be not legal it will take me outside of my set this is a problem and uh, the other problem is that i have to calculate for 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 which pairs it's still uh it still gives me fine gaps like those gaps that are bounded by this uh, by this uh, thing that i that i want uh, similarly, I can uh, I can do uh, minus, and it's very very similar. I just uh, I just have this uh, mm, uh, this blue arrow going in the other direction, and again uh, for some for some numbers it will, for some fractions it will be a, a legal move, and it will give me a good uh, good uh, a good uh, fraction that is close to the right. Okay, so once you have this idea, you can run computer. And this is what we you will get. So uh, those uh, colored regions are the regions for which small moves are fine. So let's focus on this yellow region of, of one half. And uh, for for this uh, set of uh, alpha and beta, so here alpha is uh, three over two, and beta is something. Uh, what is it? Four. Perhaps, yeah. Not too not too good, I, I would say, but. Uh, uh, it allows for a nice drawing. If I go to, to bigger ends and smaller alpha and beta, then the drawing is, uh, the interesting regions are not so uh, visible. So what I mean with this drawing is that for those fractions in this area, for those, you can move by plus, uh, one in the nominator uh, in the nominator and plus two in the denominator and be legal and be close to the to what you started with in this region you can do minus one minus two and it's fine uh, or I, I i have it's, it's it goes like this right uh, Yeah, so so we want this this arrow to to go in that direction when you consider the the, the angle. Okay, and there is this problem here that uh, it would be nice to to go there, but it's not legal. Again, here there is a problem that you would like to go here, but it's not legal. And uh, this. 
this uh, left and right part, you just calculate how far you can go and still use this, uh, this move by plus one, plus two, not to break the, this, uh, this fine gap uh, in constant. Okay, so this is the drawing that you get, and it's quite nice, right? So most of the guys in this, uh, in this uh, drawing are fine. So they have a neighbor, uh, a guy that is close to them and uh, the gap is small. Uh, as we know, here there's a problem. I have shown it to you. Uh, and uh, this is not, not enough, right? So from, from this drawing, we can't conclude that we are fine because the those uh, those gaps that are too large they can be all over the place and we need to do something about it okay so we have uh, used small moves and i have drawn the regions for which uh, the small moves give you small gaps let's try to do something different let's try to use uh, large moves and uh, well, there are regions for which, ah, one more thing. So it's not a coincidence that those regions overlap. Uh, it, I don't want to go into much detail. It will be clearer when I state the dilemma, but you, you need to parameterize somehow alpha and beta, and then you really get that using a few of those small, small moves, you will get that uh, uh, that one over three is uh, this, this re blue region corresponding to moves one over three really uh, really uh, goes into the, the the yellow region corresponding to move uh, by one and two, and uh, this only depends on alpha and beta. So the thing that is going to happen if you lower alpha and lower beta, you will need more of those small moves, but it will only depend on alpha and beta, not on n. Okay, so if I go to, to alpha, oh, it's not good. Because I eventually want to go there uh, and beta uh, even, even smaller, I will need to consider more small moves, but it will be a constant depending on alpha and beta. Okay, so now let's, let's move to, to large moves. And let's uh, focus on this interesting region. So we have, I have increased N and keep the same alpha and beta. And now you can see why I have decided to use small n in the previous uh, image because this interesting region is now smaller and smaller because it's only like, uh, like what? Uh, three three den denominators there that are problematic. And here there's this uh, green point that is problematic. So this green point is 285 over 448. And it would be super, super nice to use move, uh, move two in the denominator and three in the denominator because it's a close thing, but it's not legal because it's outside. It's it's uh, above alpha n right? because this is this is not too much. So this is the, this green one, and. Uh, what to do about it? We need to find a different move that will find a close neighbor. And now we can do the following trick. So we move one to the, to the right. So there's this guy 286 over 448 that is close to the green one. And from this guy, we will uh, go back by this, uh, move minus two, two, three, 
and keep going back until we reach the, uh, the bottom. So until we get to beta n. And this is this uh, red uh, line of arrows. This is what, what happens there. And uh, the thing that happens is if we don't start very, very close to, to two over three, then this red line is uh, parallel to this red line two over three, right? And the green one is a little bit uh, of smaller angle. So there's hope they will cross before this red uh, line gets to beta n. And this is what happens. So. This, this red line is to the left of the green one on this side and to the right on this side. And this means that they, some, that they need to cross somewhere here. I, I can't even tell where in one of those guys, okay? But when it crosses, it, the thing that happens is that this is this green one and there's a cross with a short one. Okay, but if, it is the case, then this guy is a good, uh, good neighbor of this one, right? Because they are in the red region and the green guy is between them. So now this, this, this guy is uh, a good cover for, for the green guy because it's to the right and not far away. So, for the green guy, we have found another fraction that is inside our set, not too far away, and we are happy. And this works almost everywhere here. So it allows us to, to close this bad region, except for maybe some points very close to this uh, fraction to, to over three. With those, we don't know what to do yet. And this was the idea. This is the lemma that captures this, this, this idea. So we first thing that we do is we parameterize alpha and beta by, by one constant. It, it just it doesn't really matter, but it simplifies the, the calculations to have just one parameter. So uh, in this drawing, we would have, uh, we would have what? Uh, w equal five. Yeah, so this is why I have chosen six over four and, uh, and five over four for, for alpha and beta. Okay. <clears throat> And now we need to allow for some, for big ends, not to consider two small ends. So we need to go at least that, that high. And then we have that uh, every, every interval of length one over N contains one of those uh, Faraday intervals with, from, from, from that set. So this, these guys are pierced or will, will be pierced by the uh, piercing property. And there are some bad guys. So, so, uh, so these are bad, by, bad guys. And this is exactly what I meant about small small moves. So I will use denominators up to W, okay? So, um, so uh, yeah. And uh, if you are close to, to one of those uh, small denominators, then you, we, we don't know what to do. We, we will have to do something uh, special. Okay, so, so this is the, the, the key observation. It is the, and I have 
sketch the proof. So there are some technicalities there. You need to calculate those regions exactly. But once you, you know it's true, you just calculate everything and, it's, and it happens. Uh, mm, so the, the thing is that this, this, this lemma, we use it for, for a very specific thing, right? So we want to have those Fari intervals and we want to have longer intervals and say that each of them contains one of these. Uh, but this lemma is about something different, right? So it tells you about uh, those fractions of small denominators and tell you that they, well, they are dense, right? So there are no big gaps between them. And maybe it's, it's something uh, of a, something even more important than this, this application. Okay. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's try to do something about those bad guys. So there is something written here, but let's uh, mm, let's forget about it and believe me that uh, there are at most uh, omega square gaps which are larger than this uh, this fine gap that I that I want. And their total length is at most uh, omega cube. All right, so this is what we get in the end that uh, there are only uh, omega squared gaps, and uh, each of them is uh, of, uh, of length one over one over n at most. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, um, sorry. So. There are omega squared regions in which gaps appear. And in each region, there are at most omega gaps and each gap is at most uh, of length at most uh, of length one over n, right? Because these are the, the interesting, uh, not too many. This is, this is, the, this is uh, what I want. And uh, for those gaps, I want to prepare a filler. So I want to fill those gaps. And uh, let me show you a, a filler. Mm. And I will just, well, this is this point uh, with Q, with Q small, that is a, that is a bad region. Okay, and these are some, there are some gaps there close to that region, okay? And uh, there are um, maybe omega uh, W in this direction and W in this direction. Uh, the thing is that only one of those directions happens, but we don't have it in the, in the statement of the lemma. So let's allow for both sides. And what I do, I will just, uh, mm, I will just put a lot of points there, quite dense with, uh, <clears throat> so I will just take this, uh, this problematic region and I will put a lot of points there. And by a lot, I mean, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> mm. I mean, <clears throat> sorry, I mean with, uh, with distance one over two R, right? And uh, I will put them in, uh, in, in, in twice as long. So what happens is that now this, this filler will allow me to 
to fill the gaps for all n between two to the power r minus one up to the length two to the r, right? This is because I use this length. And this is because I go twice as far, right? Because the, the gaps for smaller ends, they go further, but they are longer, the gaps. But as we increase, as we increase on, and it gets closer to this B over Q, but the gaps are smaller. There are only omega W of them, but the, the length is, is shorter, okay? And this is how I fill the gap uh, be, uh, close to this B over Q. And this one fill will give me fuel for a lot of rounds, right? Because uh, uh, there will be some uh, exponential thing happening here because I will add a filler and forget about filling things for for many rounds, it, if, if I add a filler in round n, it will, I can go to, to round two times n and not think about filling gaps because they are filled. And at that point, this filler won't be any good uh, anymore. It will, the, the distances will be uh, too large and uh, I, won't, I won't be killing all the uh, large gaps. But at that point, I will add another filler that is uh, finer, right? But I will do it only, only from time to time. Okay, so we are ready to, to piece it together. So I start with a piercing infinite sequence that is uh, very good, right? Better than the, the constant in, uh, in strongly piercing sequences. Uh, I choose uh, W, okay? So uh, I choose it so that uh, after uh, multiplying by, by alpha squared, I'm still below this, uh, this threshold that is possible for strongly piercing uh, sequences. So perhaps this, this W is quite large, but it's going to be a constant. Now, I need to allow for, for big N because uh, this, this, this lemma about uh, gaps only works for Ns uh, that are at least two times omega cube. And I just fix the prefix. So nothing happens be before this round N zero. I just add a lot of points, but this is only, uh, omega cubed, so it's a constant. And then I start adding points from this uh, piercing sequence. So I add the first batch, and then I somehow add next batch, add a filler, add the next batch, add a filler. And uh, these fillers are of uh, size uh, uh, there are like omega to the fifth points here in each filler. But here, this part gets bigger and bigger. Right? Every next step is, uh, is uh, twice bigger than the, than the previous one. And this way, uh, in the end, I, uh, I get a strongly piercing, piercing sequence. So, uh, so in order to prove that it's strongly piercing, uh, let's just uh, uh, count at which moment I have all the necessary elements. So, uh, so if I want to, um, if I want to, calculate this, this function for n. So when, when I pierce all the, all the intervals of length one over n. So yeah, I add them, it's a constant. And up to that point, I, I, will, I will have that many, um, 
fillers because they happen every for every uh, for every r up to two to the r, and I will get these many elements of the sequence x. And now I will use the lemma. So almost all uh, intervals of length one one over n are pierced because of this, because I have first uh, gamma and alpha gamma and elements of, uh, of, of the X sequence. And uh, those, those gaps will be filled by, by, by the fillers. And, and this, is, this is all. So this way I, um, I transform a, a piercing sequence into a, a strongly piercing sequence. And uh, well, I, I lose something on the way, but not, not much. And this, uh, uh, as Lehu asked in the beginning, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, error term. Well, this is the error term. There's this this uh, constant plus uh, plus again the similar constant uh, times log log n. So so this is. Uh, this is what is hidden in in this in this O N no, no, in the in the statement of our of our result. Okay, so this is how we how we prove the, the multiplicative uh, asymptotics of this of this problem. When we want to get back to this original problem by, by Graham and Berlekamp, we need to we need to do some messy things. So, so there is a way, but it's not a nice one. Somehow we need to go into the details of this uh, of this uh, Lower bound by by De Bruyne and Erdes, and take some parts of that proof and use some ideas from the from this proof for infinite sequences and, uh, and piece it together. It's messy, and we lose something on the way. So so we don't get the correct thing. And uh, the conjecture is that maybe there is some other way to to do it that would give us the, the correct asymptotics. We, 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 we really believe that this is the, the correct answer, uh, but one would have to do it maybe, maybe more, more, more clever than, than we did. So, sorry, I, I, I don't want to go into, into, those, uh, into these details as they are, they are really, really messy and uh, and uh, and yeah, let's let's keep it at uh, at this level. Okay, so I would like to wrap up. Uh, so so we have this proof. Uh, we have a good understanding of this uh, infinite version. Uh, we have this conjecture, and I think a, there's. A, Good support for, for, for it, uh, and uh, it seems that this 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 lemma that we prove and that we use for for, for those gaps that we show that uh, that uh, fractions are that those parry points as as they are called are are evenly distributed except some exceptional. Uh, exceptional points which are not many and quite uh, well understood uh, it seems that uh, that maybe this this lemma is might, might be uh, interesting for some some other applications there are problems in in, in rational approximation so so parry points are are used for for approximating some some real numbers 
uh, and uh, and maybe we can we we should uh, investigate whether whether the, this result that, that that we have can be can be used in in this uh, these areas to to, to maybe uh, shed some some new light on on those problems. Uh, you can even express uh, Riemann hypothesis in terms of uh, something similar. So there is this uh, statement about parry points uh, that is that was shown to be uh, um, equal to, to Riemann hypothesis that again says that parry points are evenly distributed. It, it's a different, uh, in a different way. So I'm not claiming that we can use it to uh, to approach uh, anything close to, to Riemann hypothesis. But what I'm trying to, to say that such such things have uh, maybe unexpected uh, neighbors. Uh, but maybe Riemann hypothesis is not an unexpected neighbor. It neighbors everything. Okay. Uh, and there are also maybe some problems uh, that are versions of this uh, this seventeen point problem that we would like to that we would like to uh, advertise. So one nice thing is that uh, you can you can try to be greedy in this this uh, this problem. So the seventeen round problem you you can you can you can somehow go seventeen rounds without adding unnecessary points. Okay, but then you will have to add two. Okay, in this solution by by De Bruyne and Erdes, you are not greedy. So in the um, uh, I think in the fifth round you add two points, and you could do with four. So it would be interesting to 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 investigate whether you can like always be optimal like use the lowest possible number of colors and uh, and still be uh, optimal in the long sense, meaning uh, uh, using the, having this multiplicative uh, constant uh, one over ln two. And uh, we are not, not sure. And there are some, some variants in which, uh, we want to pierce plane, not uh, not uh, not uh, zero one segment, but zero one square. Uh, some of them, the most natural ones, can be expressed in the in the, in our setting. But there are some that are maybe more more interesting. So. What I'm trying to say is that still we have some problem, some questions that we that we didn't answer here. And uh, yeah, maybe you can go three-dimensional, but, but maybe maybe this is this is the place I would like to stop. And uh, thank you. <laughs>